So the first question you want to ask yourself when you're building a computer is, what is the intended purpose of the machine? So in other words, what do you want your computer to do? So I have computers, I have two computers myself, and one's built for gaming. So it has a dedicated graphics card. It's, it's built to render 3D virtual environments, you could say. And I also have a work computer, and the work computer is designed to render video. So your build will vary depending on what the intended purpose of your, of your machine is. Now you can go all in, and if money, if money's, if there's no questions regarding money, uh, you can put the best components in your computer and can do anything you want it to. But most people don't have that luxury. So we're going to go with a more focused build. So this is going to be designed for uh, programming, some light uh, animation, and then some gaming. So what would a computer that could do these three things look like? So we'll start with the very basics and what we're going to need is a computer case. Oops. Now let's bring up some computer cases. Now there's typically three sizes. There's going to be small, medium, and large towers. So let's pull up some images. Alright, so something like this would be a larger tower. Um, if you see on the right hand side, you have bays for drives, you have bays for hard drives, and in the back, you have bays for um, SATA devices. So, a smaller case would look, let's see if I can find something. Well, this is a smaller case, but this is kind of fancy. But the nice thing about uh, small towers, uh, micro towers, is they easily fit on a desk. Now, why I like to have my computer on a desk is it's easier to manage it, and it's easier to plug peripherals in and out. So, you know, it's easier to manage your keyboard, mouse, USB drives, what have you. And then it also stays cooler. So many cases at the bottom, there will be a vent to vent out heat. And if it's if the case is sitting on carpet, um, I know in my home office there's carpet, it, it will get a bit warmer. It's harder to disperse heat. So it's nicer to have it on a, a desk, you know, a wood gla or, or glass desk so it stays cool. So we're gonna go with a micro tower for our build. I'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see, here's a good, good representation. So it's about double the size of a wine glass, and it's nice and easy to manage. And this is great if you know you're gonna if you're gonna keep things simple. If you're you're not gonna have multiple hard drives. If you're not gonna have multiple graphics cards, or I don't know. This is nice. Oh, and here's another good picture. So we're actually be, going to be going with a mini, I believe it's called a mini tower. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in here. Now we'll just leave computer case and then mini tower. And then the next thing we're going to want to look for is a CPU. All right, so you have two main manufacturers. You have Intel, which is the most popular, and then you have AMD, which is more of a budget option. And we're definitely going to go with an Intel processor just because I've used Intel processors for all my builds and they're rated very well. And they, they have very high performance standards and we'll go over this in a later lecture. I'll show you some, I'll show you how to benchmark processors. There's some great sites on how to do this. And even some of the lower end Core i processors still out benchmark the highest AMD processors. So while on the surface, the price for an AMD pricer might look like much less when you compare the flagship AMD processors to the flagship Intel processors, the, the performance isn't quite there. So, and you, it go, uh, you'll hear the words CPU, processor, um, trying to think of any other, any other synonyms. Anyway, so for the CPU, we're going to go with Intel. 
And I'm thinking an Intel Core i3 off the top of my head, but we'll see what kind of deals we can get. And we'll, once again, we'll cover that later. Right now we're just going over the necessities of the components you need to build a computer. So next we're gonna need a hard drive. Now a hard drive is for storage. It, it holds programs, files. It's basically your long-term memory. You can think of it that way. Now you'll have the choice to go with a traditional hard drive or a solid state drive. Now a solid state drive has much faster uh, read and write speeds. So the time it takes for your computer to initialize a program or start up the initial boot up is much faster with a solid state drive. And it's also, it doesn't make as much noise as a traditional hard drive. Now traditional hard drives, they have moving parts. They actually have a disk. That's why it's, they're called a hard, a hard disk. But and they and they used to like make clicking sounds and used to be really loud, but they're much quieter now. But there's still a little bit of noise, and there it's just the the data transfer rates just aren't nearly as fast as a solid state drive. And solid state drives are also smaller, and you can you can you can also use these in notebooks. So they pretty sure there's a standard size that fits in both a, a notebook and a PC desktop. Whereas with these big uh, traditional hard drives. They make smaller drives for laptops. So for a hard drive, we're gonna put it in a solid state. I'm not quite sure on the actual size yet because what we'll be doing is we'll, we'll be pulling the old hard, the hard drive out of the old computer we're replacing so that will be used for extra storage, whereas all the primary applications will be running like on a daily basis and obviously Windows, that will be on the solid state drive because we want those things to run as fast as possible. Whereas files, you know, MP4s, video, you know, MP3 files, pictures, it doesn't really matter whether those are on the a solid state or traditional hard drive. Y yes, it still will, it will still load and run smoother but it's not it's not noticeable whereas with when you're actually running programs or you know downloading programs or installing to a solid state drive it's much faster so next we're going to need ram or memory so sticks of ram they go they connect into the motherboard and you can kind of think of RAM is the computer's short-term memory, or what RAM is used to run applications. So where you have a hard drive for storage to store what you could view as historical information, RAM is used for active, active processing of programs. So as far as RAM goes, the standard right now is eight gigabytes, and eight gigabytes will do almost everything you need to do the computer you won't get bottlenecked in any way so we're going to go ram or memory we're going to go eight gigabytes 1600 all right and finally we will need a power supply unit and the amount of power we'll need for our computer will depend ultimately depend on our final build so if you're just going with a, um, if you're just going with a basic build, nothing, no extras, you don't you don't need a lot of power these days. You could probably get by with three, probably 350 watt power supply. It's when you add ad additional, so it's when you add higher end components. It's when you add more power to the actual machine as far as processing goes. Is when you'll need more power, but you know the new processors solid state drive you know it doesn't require much power so this is going to be to be determined because we'll use a calculator to determine how much power our computer will ultimately need all right and i almost forgot we'll need a motherboard 
and a motherboard connects everything together. It basically takes the power supply, the RAM, the hard drive, the CPU, and it connects all these components together. And then what you get with that is your computer, your working computer. So once again, with the motherboard, we just need to make sure it's compatible with our Intel Core i3 processor. So motherboards, there are specific motherboards for Intel and AMD processors. So depending on which way you go, uh, as far as the CPU goes, you'll need to choose the proper motherboard. And some motherboards have more bells and whistles than others. But once again, the motherboard, it's not I would put it in the similar category as like the power supply and the RAM. It's not, you just want to make sure it's compatible with your processor and then it has everything you need to be able to run your computer properly. But typically what I do is I look for bundles, the CPU motherboard. So you get by far the best deals when you bundle the CPU and motherboard together. And the reason um, computer companies do this is because most people don't care about the motherboard. Most people are obsessed with, you know, with finding the right CPU for what they need. And the motherboard is kind of a throw-in, you know, that's just kind of what the motherboard is. And there's also packages with motherboard, CPU, and RAM. And there are also things like bare bone packages. You'll see those on computer sites where it's basically missing like one component or sometimes it is a complete CPU and all you have to do is put it together. So if you're looking for a good route financially, you might want to just go with a bare bones kit. So anyway, motherboard will be to, ter uh, to be determined as well because I'm not sure what we'll ultimately get. All right, so these six components are the basic necessities of a working functioning computer. And you could even argue that a computer case isn't necessary. But we'll, we'll definitely, we want a computer case just to keep everything housed nicely, keep it clean, keep it away from the elements, even though we're inside. But um, these are the six primary components of a computer. So one thing we're gonna be adding is a graphics card or graphics processing unit. Now the reason we're adding this is for gaming. To play, to play the latest games, to render the 3D environments, you need a dedicated graphics card. At least to run it in a high quality at you know, full HD, 1080p. So I know for a fact I will be going with an NVIDIA card. Now I, ha I personally have a machine with an AMD card in it or a uh, Radeon card and it works great. The reason I'm going with NVIDIA is just because I haven't built a computer with an NVIDIA card in a while and I just want to see the, I want to see the differences in between the two because uh, AMD and NVIDIA cards, they have different um, third-party applications running them. They have different clocking speeds. So it's just, it's refreshing to kind of learn, you know, how far the technology, not only how far the technologies come, but also how the two differ as far as hardware and software. So this is optional. This is completely optional. And then something else you might want to think about is a disk drive. So the reason I'm not including a CD, DVD, Blu-ray, whatever disk drive in this build is because I work with all digital content. I don't use disks at all anymore. I don't burn CDs. I don't, you know, I don't watch Blu-rays on my computer. So a disk drive is completely unnecessary. You don't even need a disk drive to install your operating system. So whether you decide to go with Windows, Linux, some other operating system, you don't actually need a disk drive to install and get the operating system installed on your hard drive. You can do this, you can create a boot, uh, a boot flash drive. So just a little thumbnail flash drive or USB stick. You can, there are applications to put the operating system on it and then install it from there. So I'll put I'll put disk drive in here. Once again, it's completely optional. So that's about it as far as the planning goes. In the next lecture, 
we'll, we'll go ahead and choose our processor and I'll show you some great resources for benchmarking processors and choosing the one that best fits your needs.